So let me guess, during your open water course, your instructor told you that you always need some type of ditchable weight system. That way, during an out-of-air emergency, you can ditch your weights and your body's going to go up. Or if you're struggling at the surface to stay positively buoyant, you simply pull out your weight pouches and then you don't have to struggle. And in short, that is true, but at the same time, it's not true. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. Today we're going to be talking about what a balanced rig is and whether or not it's actually going to be right for you. But before we get started, if you are new to our channel, take a few seconds here, click this little subscribe button, and make sure you ring the little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now when we talk about a balanced rig, we first of all need to understand what it is, where it came from, and why divers choose to dive it. Basically, in short, a balanced rig is any type of scuba system that you can swim up from any given depth. And it's actually not something new. It's been around for a very long time. It came about from the golden age of cave diving. As a cave diver was going through a restriction, he didn't actually want to accidentally lose his weights and they'd be, say, pinned up against the canopy area. So they didn't really have ditchable weights for them. Well, if we go back even further than that, say, to the 40s and 50s, if you remember, Mike Nelson never really had a buoyancy compensator. Basically, he had a cylinder on his back, he had a webbing strap system or some type of tank strap system, and then he had his exposure suit. And he had to compensate, say, for the buoyancy characteristics of that exposure suit, and he added weights. Well, once again, he didn't have no way to balance out the buoyancy characteristics at depth, so he always had to wait properly for the, the depth he was going to, and then during an emergency, all he had to do was swim up, and as he come up, his suit would expand and he would actually become say, positively buoyant. Well, if this is what a balanced rig is, why do a lot of divers choose to do it? Well, in short, it allows that diver to minimize the amount of weight they actually need for any given dive. And this alone is going to help that diver from being overweighted for all their dives. So before we go any further and before you throw out your weight belt and get rid of your integrated weight systems, there's four things that you need to understand about a balanced rig or about your rig specifically before you decide to switch over to it. First of all, if you're not comfortable diving with non-ditchable weights, then by all means, keep your weight belt, keep your weight pouches, and get out there and dive and have a good time. However, the more experienced you become, then you'll start to realize that balanced rigs are really not that dangerous. The first thing that you want to do, of course, is assess your system. You need to get out there and truly understand Understand the total buoyancy characteristics of your total rig, not just your buoyancy compensator, but also your exposure suit, your fins, your regulator, your mask. Once you're totally geared up, you need to have a thorough understanding of the buoyancy characteristics of your total dive system. Once you do that, then you can really get properly weighted. Now, there's a long story that I could kind of go into about being properly weighted, but I'm going to make it a lot easier for you. Here in the past, we did a video on how to properly weight yourself, and I'll actually link it up here for you. And I think this video is very, very important for you, and you will learn a lot from it. And the reason is, a lot of instructors will actually overweight their students from the get-go, and this puts you down the wrong path. The reason instructors do that is for one of two reasons. One, maybe that diver's not comfortable and he's not releasing all the gas as he exhales and his buoyancy is just all over the place. So to make it easy on him, the instructor will just throw extra weight on him and that way he can go down to do his skills. Now this in and of itself can cause a lot of issues. The other reason is, is the instructor himself doesn't necessarily understand how to properly weight somebody. You know, most dive training agencies will tell instructors to teach their students where if you hold a single breath at the surface with no air in your BC, then you should float at eye level. And the problem with that is you've got a cylinder that is completely full. So at the end of your dive, you're going to be more positively buoyant than what you actually want to. And so to do that test thoroughly, you're going to have to actually drain that cylinder down to say the last working third of the tank pressure to make sure you're doing it properly. Now, once you've assessed your system, you've got properly weighted, you need to practice. You need to get out there with an instructor or say somebody who's more experienced with you and you need to try to swim up with your rig without any type of ditchable weights. Do this obviously in a confined water environment. Start say in a five foot section of a pool then an eight foot and a ten foot and if you're lucky enough to find a 20 foot pool then definitely try that as well. See if you can swim that system up. Once you've done all that then of course you want to fine tune your 
your system. And fine tuning your system is not a one time thing. If you're all the time diving, say, in a freshwater environment and now you're diving in a saltwater environment, then you're going to have to re fine tune your system. So make sure that you've assessed your system, you've got properly weighted, you've practiced with this in multiple environments, and then fine tune it. I will throw an extra pointer in there log your dives, guys. Get out there and log exactly how much weight you had on for this particular dive, and that will definitely help you in the future. Well, let's take a quick look at one of my personal kits, and this is one of my side mount kits that I actually dive a balanced rig on, and I'll kind of show you how the weight system is actually set up. All right, guys, so I got one of my side mount systems here, and I want to show you the weight system that's actually attached to it and kind of how it works. And I want to talk a little bit about why there's no ditchable weights here. First of all, in side mount diving, a lot of people will say, well, side mount is a crutch to kind of hold you in trim. And I'll be honest with you, that is true. Obviously, we want to hold perfectly neutral buoyancy or perfect trim in the water. And side mount kind of allows you to do that because you're shifting the weight around by sliding your tanks down. You're not actually putting it on your back, say up top. You're actually putting it on the side and by shifting it across the fulcrum point, it does allow us to use it, say, as a crutch, as trim. But a diver who has plenty of experience will understand that it doesn't matter the tank that you use, it doesn't matter the buoyancy compensator or whether you're using a weight belt or, say, weight integrated weights, you can hold trim by simply manipulating your body and not letting the system itself manipulate you. But on this particular system, I've got what's called a T-weight pouch. And that T-weight pouch is here at the spine of the system. There's three weight pouches here in the center. I've got two on each side and then I also have some trim pouches here. Now one of the reasons I choose to use this system is because I teach with this system and if I'm putting this on a student I may need to trim him out or add just a few pounds here or there. To do that all I've got to do obviously is just put the weights into the pockets. Now a lot of times you'll see side mount divers with the weights threaded on and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but since I teach with this system it's a lot easier just to use these pouches than each time having to re-thread weights on for new students. So in short this is basically how it works. I'm going to use the T-weight pouch here, and I'm going to put the exact amount of weight that I determined from my calculation into the system, and then I'm going to get out there and dive it. During the fine-tuning process, I can actually shift those weights around. If I need to pull the five out of the spine area and put it in the kidney area, then I can do that to help me with trim as well. But once again, a balanced rig, you need to make sure that you assess your equipment and the total buoyancy characteristics of it. You want to also make sure that you confirm your ideal weighting and simply put, do the calculation that we gave you guys and get out there in the pool and test it. And while you're in the pool, see if you can swim that system up. And then as you practice with it, definitely fine tune your system. Now I'm going to show you another way that that some side mount divers choose to do their systems based off whether they're using say an aluminum or steel cylinder and I'll talk a little bit about why I personally don't like this method but it is a viable option for you as well. So I got two different cylinders here. This is just a standard aluminum 80. This is a steel 100. And steel 100s are very popular, say, for back-mounted doubles, even for back-mounted singles. They're not so much popular for uh, side-mount divers. A lot of side-mount divers who use steel will use like a low-pressure 85 or a low-pressure 95. However, in our area here, we have a ton of side-mount divers that always dive in a dry suit, and they actually prefer the steel 100 because of its buoyancy characteristics. It's not really going to shift in their rig as they use up their air. That's one of the hugest caveats to an aluminum tank. As you use up the gas in the cylinder, it is going to start to get a little light on the tail end of it. Now, there's many ways to compensate for that. Me, personally, I just simply change D-rings. I go from a back D-ring up to a forward D-ring, and that's going to help control that trim. So as it starts to shift upwards, as I use up the gas, then I can trim it back down by simply moving D-rings. Another viable option is divers will actually add weights to their systems. And all you've got to do is just simply thread on the weight to the cam strap if that's what you're using on your system. And that's going to allow you to maintain proper trim with your cylinders as you use up the gas. Now, a lot of people will ask me, well, why do you always use aluminum cylinders when you side mount dive? And there's really two major reasons. One, I know that I can always find a cylinder no matter where I go. If I'm, say, across seas, I can find it. If I'm here in the States, I can always find a cylinder. And it doesn't really bother me that that tank shifts up because of the side mount rig that I use has two D-rings. So I don't really like adding weights to here because it's taking the weights personally off of me and it's put my ballast system on the cylinder. Now, if I'm dropping a stage cylinder or something like that and I've got weights attached to it, then obviously I'm dropping weights off me. I'm not going to be properly weighted anymore. So yes, this may be a viable option, but if you ever had to ditch a cylinder for whatever reason, then you're also taking off your weights for your ballast system as well. 
So balance rig, how do you know that it's right for you? Unfortunately, I can't actually give you an answer there. That's a decision that you're going to have to make. I would encourage you to get out there with your instructor and practice with your system and see if it's going to be right for you. I know a lot of us made the decision early on to switch over to the balanced rig, but we had the experience. So until you get that confidence about you and until you get the experience, stick with your ditchable weights, whether it's a weight belt or an integrated system, and slowly transition into it. And when you do make that decision, don't just cold turkey it. Make sure that you've got a mentor there or an instructor there that's going to help you out. Guys, if you enjoyed this video on Balanced Rig and if you found it educational, do me a huge favor. Simply hit that thumbs up button for me and definitely share it as well. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. we got a pretty good trip coming up here in the next two weeks that I really think you guys are going to enjoy. And I'm going to be doing some deep wreck diving and some penetration diving. And I'm actually going to be taking my side mount rig with me. And a lot of you guys have asked me to make videos on side mount diving as far as how you enter and exit the water with different systems. And since I dive a system that doesn't really clip my tanks off, I use a bungee system. I'm going to be making a series of videos on how we actually get in and out of the water inside mount. And I'll show you from a land-based dive site, basically a shore dive where you walk in. And I'll also be showing you how I get on and off a boat, say even in heavier seas in the ocean. So definitely stay tuned for that. But guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. Once again, if you've got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.